Just to get the kids a little experience with thinking about something mathematically and spatially that isn't just, you know, what three fourths plus one half. So, Common Core, whatever you think of Common Core, I happen to think that a lot of it is really good. That it's really the way they're asking us to teach kids pushes them in the right direction. It pushes them to think about things other than just memorizing a formula. Gosh, when I, you know, when I started teaching, I've been here four years, before that I was a little bit in Walnut Creek, but I haven't been a teacher my whole career. I started out with Dilbert, that, uh, I was at PG&E instead of at Pac Bell, but uh, same kind of thing. I worked in a cubicle, um, then I worked for the city of Pleasanton, and then I was fortunate enough to have a break of quite a few years where I stayed home and took care of the kids. Uh, our son and our daughter and our daughter, we just sent her off to college in Montana to, before the school started. Um, that was exciting. But I gradually got into the classroom, volunteering, then substituting, then being a PE teacher, and then becoming a math teacher. So I've been here for four years. And when, Oh, the point I was going to make, Common Core, when I started out doing my student teaching and, and working in Walnut Creek, Every class was the same. Here's the class. You come in. All right, everybody sit down. You got a warm-up problem up there. Do your warm-up. Okay, we're going to go over the homework. Here are the answers. Any questions? Okay, great. Today's concept is blah, 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 blah. Here's how you do a sample problem. Try this problem. Here are three problems. This is how you do it. Okay, do that problem. All right, got it? Let's try another one. Okay, try some more. Okay, good job, guys. Now, here's your homework for tonight. Start working on it on the book. My daughter went through middle school, three years of middle school. She never once worked with a partner. Now this was at a good school. This was a Walnut Creek Intermediate School, which is, you know, it's like this school. 
That was before Common Core. They never worked in partners. We didn't do, we weren't doing group work. We weren't doing difficult inquiry, challenging problems like we ask kids to do now. Now we're doing group work, partner work, hard problems, figure it out, um, talk to your partners, talk to other people, communicate, write about stuff. Common Core requires us to do that. It's a lot harder to teach this way. We have to have a lot more stuff prepared, but it's so much worth it. So my second comment, my math teacher. Um, um, but it's so worth it because the kids start thinking instead of just memorizing. And I've seen this, I've seen kids who can do all kinds of formulas and memorize this stuff, and yet, they don't know what it means. So what Common Core is trying us to get us to do is to have the kids understand that's what it means. So we spend a lot of time working on the number line. This is why this works this way. So it's still a work in progress, but that's what's going on. I think it's definitely an improvement. Um, see, the other thing I want to mention before you have to go, I'm trying a new thing this year with um, test scores. If someone gets below 50%, I'm just going to record it as 50%, not the 30% or whatever. The reason for that is that we're, we're trying to keep anyone from having a, a single test that's really low from tanking their grade for the whole semester or something. Also, anyone who gets below 75% has an opportunity to improve their score by doing a retake. But they have to do a little extra work for it, okay? Um, I haven't put any posters up yet because I'm going to put the first ones up tomorrow and those are going to be heirs or gifts and we learn more from fixing mistakes than we do from just doing things right the first time. I try to emphasize that. Kids who had me last year are probably going to be tired of hearing it, but it's true. There's neuro neurological research that shows the brain grows more and works more when you're fixing mistakes than you are um, just doing something that you already know. Um, let's see, other things, did I mention cross country? Okay, so I'm doing cross country. Anybody has a kid who likes to run or wants to do cross country, Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're going to start next week. Um, have them come out, I would love to have them. We don't work really hard, it's just kind of fun. They have two meets, it's only one mile that they have to run. Um, let's see, I told you about myself. Wow, did I get all that done? I'll send you the PowerPoint. If you have any questions on the PowerPoint, Please let me know. I'm here before school almost every day. I get here by 7.30, always by 7, almost always by 7.30. Uh, and I'm here after school almost every day too. And I, you know, you got a free tutor right here. And I don't charge $90 an hour. Kids just come by. Sometimes it's just ask a simple question. Um, you guys are fifth period, so I see them right before lunch, so right after class, hey, guess what? I can help them at lunchtime if they're interested. It's amazing how many kids don't want to take me up on that offer. But <laughs> just remind them, okay? Oh, I can't, no, I don't know, I can't go see Mr. Sherwood. Oh, really, really, what are you doing right after fifth period? Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, I'll be here. So, um, have them stick around. What's um, the cadet event? Oh, so that was the talk. The, that guy talking about the mindset. Did I not show you guys that? No. No. Oh, that's what I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's watch this. What do you think is the key to achieving our goals, our success? Some people suggest things like hard work, focus, persistence. But research shows these are all byproducts of something else, something much more powerful that we can all develop. It is this very special something that really is critical to success, and is what I'm here to discuss with you today. Okay, so... Someone who has achieved great success is just... I showed your kids the first five minutes of this video, I think on the second or third day of school. The point here is, he said, hard work, um, effort, and that are byproducts of something else. Hard work isn't really going to make you long-term successful, unless you have a mindset, which they call the growth mindset, which says... I can learn anything if I really want to, and I really try. The kid has to believe that their hard work is going to pay off and is going to be useful and is going to make a difference in their life, in their academics, in their achievements. So I would ask of you guys, 
if you could please just help them if they're ever struggling help them keep that mindset that growth mindset that yeah you can do this you may not be a super duper A student or if you are an A student you may not be the top one in the whole school but you can do better you will do better but that effort without that mindset is not going to be successful. We got to have that mindset that the kids can think this effort's going to pay off. I keep telling them that. That's why we do the errors or gifts and that. We have mistake day tomorrow. But if you can just help them with that mindset, if they're frustrated, let them know, hey, it's going to work out. Plus, tell them, come and see Mr. Sherwood after lunch, after class, because he'll help you for free. Okay. All right. Thanks.